there's perception, there's no new day. But in our perceptions, uh, we keep on seeing new days and still we can take advantage of it when we perceive that that very day is going to be our greatest day in our lives because God is into it. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that, yes, may this day, may this day yield fruits for you and respond positively to you in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that, yes, you grow even stronger than you were before and the eyes of your understanding will be illuminated and you walk in the light and you will never stumble in jesus mighty name glory to god forevermore we bless the lord for this beautiful day once again uh, we are blessed to have this time and share the gospel to share this message is is a wonderful thing to to listen to the message of old time is a wonderful thing because it reveals so much about uh, the reality of what is present and according to god you know and that might be different in fact it's different from uh, what we consider to be real uh, today there are things which we consider to be uh, real which are not real in the eyes of our father so when god is interpreting uh, what he sees it is based on truth but when we interpret on what we interpret what we see it's based on uh, level of our understanding you know which is not quite uh, good or we may miss this here and there and and you you we we are always seeing things that are different from what god is seeing so we align our perception with the divine perception god's perception and and that helps us to know wow this is what we've got to be to be seeing so we have to learn something today and uh, what we have to learn is found in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 and that's where we are today Second Corinthians 5, verse 18, he says, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. This is also another powerful word. You know, the whole idea that Paul has, of course, can be seen in verses, uh, the whole chapter, you know, uh, dealing with this chapter 5 and we saw in verse 17 that man is an a waiver that is if any man is in christ jesus is a new creation the old things are passed away behold all things have become new and then the next verse he will say something very very powerful he says and all things are of god and all things are of god you see, this is connected to the previous verse. And the previous verse had said that all things have become new. And talking that meant you as a new being, a new person, and also the environment. It's talking about the environment called in Christ Jesus. In Christ is a new environment and the new you, meaning you who have joined the Lord and became one spirit, you have become a new being and a new creation so the new you plus the new environment is uh, what he describes in verse 17 and in verse 18 he talks about that and all things are of god and all things in other words he says that what happened to you as a result of the work of jesus christ 
has reproduced new qualities, new features, the new you and the new environment. And then he says, all things, and all things are of God. So in other words, he's talking about all things about you are of God. You see? All things about you are of God. It's like John who will say that little children, ye are of God and ye have overcome them. He says, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He acknowledges that greater is he that is in you. Of course, he's talking about God in you. He's talking about the Holy Spirit in you. He's talking about Christ in you. And then, that is the meaning of all things are of God. So what constitutes you, who you are, what you have now is of God. You don't have anything of the fallen man, you know, the, the, the Adam was the first man. You, you don't have it, you see, and you are not it. Whatever that you think you have is just a mental something in your mind. But he's saying to you that, and all things are of God. You cannot be born of God and then say that all things are not of God, yet he's the one who gave birth to you. You cannot be, you cannot come, be issued out of God, from God, and then not say or not add that all things now are of God. So this is what is telling us in verse 18. There are no things, it says, and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. So he, now, he says all things are of God. Why? Because we've been reconciled to him by Jesus Christ. He who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Now, in other words, we belong to him glory to God. We belong to him. And now if we belong to him, because we've been reconciled to him, we've joined him, we are one with him. He says, now all things are of God. So if you look at yourself, he says that all things, when God is looking at you, he says all things are of God now. The true identity, the true nature of yours is now of God. You have the mind of Christ. You have the nature of God. You have the life of God in you. You are a child of God. You belong to him. All things are of God. When you begin to think this way, you will be free from a lot of lies, deceptions. You will not think of, you know, the devil being in you somewhere, you know. You're thinking of all things are of God now. You are now his you belong to him because you've been sanctified by the work of christ jesus you've been separated now all things belong to god can i remind you that in the old testament um god told moses about the temple uh, then it was called the ark of the covenant so, in that tent that Moses built, and he, but he didn't build it with his own hands, rather God used people in his time. He anointed them and they were able to build uh, the ark according to the vision Moses received from that mountain, from the Mount Sinai. And so, when he saw what he saw, uh, there were other men to implement what he saw. It is not even him who did it, but God filled the Spirit. Uh, in those men and they managed to do the work that uh, established the Ark of the Covenant. So, but whatever that was made in that Ark of the Covenant, after all the work, you know, the presence of God ascended, the descended rather upon that uh, Ark of the Covenant and the light uh, remained in that Ark of the Covenant and the cloud covered 
that ark. And so everything about that uh, ark or the covenant was significant. Every item, every tool, every object that was used, it was significant. It had a meaning. You know, the curtains had meanings. The, the showbread had a meaning. The table had a meaning. The, the, the lampstand had a meaning. So everything in the house, in the temple, you know, they, there are uh, meanings, you know, that are uh, connected to them. But I want you to know that all that was there, after he had built the Ark of the Covenant, it was anointed, it was uh, he used the blood to sprinkle, he sprinkled the blood around and said, this is uh, a covenant that God has made with you, the children of Israel, and that's the old covenant. And we are told that all the objects were actually sanctified. It's like even the woods in that covenant, in, in that uh, Ark of the Covenant, was also sanctified. It belonged to God. There was nothing there that did not belong to God. And that is the meaning of separation. A separation means you are setting apart something. You're making it special for yourself. You're like, this is mine. You know, that, that, is, what, and that, that is the meaning of separation. Of sanctification. This is mine and no one else will touch it. So the Bible told us now, remember we are now the true temple of God. We are the true house of God. He had a vision to make us his abode, to make us his home, to make us his house, his building, to sanctify us, to separate us from wherever we were before. And therefore he says, I know things are of God now. See, if he could separate the Ark of the Covenant, which was made by man's hands, and he made it so special, how much more you? He's talking about you. You are of God. All things are of God. In other words, we belong to him. In other words, he separated you. He chose you. You are his. You don't belong to anyone else. You don't belong to anybody else. You are his. You belong to him. Glory to God. So no things are of God. That is what he tells us. Do you see that all things about you belong to God? Is of God? You shouldn't be seeing things differently from how God sees them. And this is what I've said from the beginning. That our perceptions should be aligned with that of God. Because what does God see about you? He's, whatever he sees is, is true. And our, we should align our own perceptions with his and that is standing in the truth. That's the meaning of standing in the truth. Shalom, shalom. Sweet,